So what is the pathophysiology? This is a protrusion of the mucosa through the defect in the wall of the gut is the classical reason for diverticular disease. So these diverticular are pseudo diverticular because they do not have all the four layers of intestines. So a serial protrusion through the mesenteric side of the anti mesenteric tinea coli. These are the weaknesses in the wall at the point of entry of vessels from the subserosa to the submucosa. If you remember the mesenteric vessels are placed subserosally and they pierce through the muscularis to the supply the submucosa and the mucosa. So those entry points are the weakness through which when there is increased intraluminal pressure the mucosa tends to herniate out. As the vessels of the mesentery are larger the weaknesses are larger. Surprisingly the defect is always and most of the time is on the mesenteric side of the anti mesenteric tinea coli. If you remember the tinea coli or the bundles of longitudinal muscles of the colon, three of them are normally seen. One is on the mesentery side and there are two placed on either side of the anti mesenteric line. And this diverticular happens on the mesenteric side of the anti mesenteric tinea coli. This is a section which shows this the diverticulum happening on the mesenteric border of the anti mesenteric tinea coli. So as I said it is false diverticulum. Sigmoid colon is affected nearly 50 percent and the total colon can be affected in 5 percent of the patient. They appear at the point of the entry of the vessels because of the replacement of the collagen by elastin leading to thickened appearance of the colon. The affected colon with the diverticular are thicker than the unaffected areas. Reduced expression of matrix metalloproteinase 1 is the evidence that the structural abnormality is important in the formation of diverticulum. Micro perforations leads to my peridiverticulitis and if it is not sealed it leads into classical acute diverticulitis. Now coming to clinical symptoms, most of them are asymptomatic. Unless the onset of complications these diverticula do not produce any symptoms. They may be identified incidentally during some other imaging process. Patient may present with diverticulitis, colonic perforation, abscess formation which could be pericolic or intraperitoneal and bleeding. Patient can present with lower GI bleeding. <laughs>